boys. Right, welcome, boys. Great boys. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Scratch Record podcast. We are joined again by another very, very special guest. Two in a row. That is such two a in treat. a row. They've released two songs that have been mega in our playlist, and one of the ones that people have been back and forth with us telling me that they've really enjoyed Sober Minds and as well as Fallen. This is we've got the lead singer today of Baby Lung. Welcome to the podcast, boy. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks, Welcome, Max, mate. How are you? All good. All good, mate. All good. Yeah, All there. good in the hood. Yeah, turn into your mouth, yeah. Yeah, 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 getting back to it. Getting That's back it, to yeah. it. Uh, just to start off, like let's let's get into it and try and describe what you and your boys' sound is like as a if anyone who as a collective know. people that don't know who you yeah. are. What we sound? Oh, <laughs> this <is> two hours <laughs> gone. <though. laughs> no, naturally, whenever you release music, people will tell you what band you sound like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We've never had the same band twice. We've from literally you got and you know what you sound like. See so this. Yeah. You sound like Coldplay. What? Oh, really? <laughs> so like Artie Monkey is not no. Uh, who else? There's some proper out there ones, but I, I don't know. I don't know what we sound like. It's, it's jazz chords and a pop song structure with a soul feel. I think it's probably the best. Nice. Way. I, I like think that. that's a good way. Click that. Up. Yeah. <laughs> Just say that. That every is a good word. Describe it. Yeah, that sounds good. So I think for me, I feel like I've got quite a lot to talk about. So I think we smash through sort of early on. <laughs> A little bit of that more generic <coughs> stuff, but about you know about you, how you got into music. Like, give us your story, basically, of, what, of the way you went through it. Right. So, is uh, in primary school when I was six years old. I was a bit of a class joker sort of thing, and the way to combat that is one of the teachers brought me into a music room. Um, big up the steel pans. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. Get steel out, pans, man. No. Steel pans. Yeah, so six I did the steel pans. So the front, like the little ones, and then I went to. You remember the big old ones? Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, never yeah, got yeah. to them, mate. mate. No, no, no. <laughs> I, did, I did them for literally like we did two like tours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've done the same. Yeah, just. so we did. Tours. So I did them for like two, but that was too like drum for me. So I like so it was like really keep, quickly it's keep, tours. Yeah, 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 yeah. We went up and down the country. No, <laughs> like we did a couple Wonder of summer bro. fairs. We did That's a couple what? of summer fates in like a village. We played Durn Gate once. Did you actually? Yeah. That is big. But, um, bear in mind, yeah, like you playing the big ones, fair enough, you're tall enough. <laughs> I was six years you old. I was like, three one. foot yeah. with a tick blow, <laughs> blown mohawk. Just like, like that. And then That's funny. gradually, yeah, just worked my way back. And then um, six, played drums. I sort of, sort of just taught myself, got the hang of it. From the sort of steel pans, using yeah, the hand-eye yeah. coordination to play drums, carried that on. Um, but the thing is, when I finished school, it was what I do with drums now. Do yeah, 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 I don't know what to do. And luckily, there was a thing called Gig Club, um, which is like a local community centre. They got all musicians there. You put them in bands, and then they put gigs on for you. Oh, that's and brilliant. Was, that's it. There's a lot of metalheads there, so I didn't really fit in. Do you know what I mean? So mm. I joined like a punk band or something <laughs> on drums. But at the time I was listening oh mate the terrible fucking music as a child I was just like end dubs and like do you know what I mean whoa whoa whoa, 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 whoa. I N-dubs will not have no end dubs end dubs but do you know what I mean tier. so I'm go- but the thing is when you're going into this musician hub yeah, no, like, little yeah, metal heads that are like long era I'm like yeah check out end dubs yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 I heard that new single so wearing, wearing a daffy hat <laughs> 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 yeah. But, uh, so yeah I joined like a Blink-182 sort of rip off thing and then yeah, yeah. I met a few lads that sort of got me into like Arctic Monkeys Kooks and the indie the noughties indie which is better than the nineties oh, and then that, what, well hold on <laughs> three minutes and he's mentioned it. <laughs> yeah you're wrong but um <laughs> so yeah ended up joining them again playing drums with the looking indie thing and then gradually just wanted to play guitar learned how to play guitar cool I was at college, so I sort of got involved more with that. And then yeah. um, was in a band, played guitar and sang. That sort of fell through. Uh, and then I gave up music for a bit, actually. I was about a year yeah. or so. I just didn't play anything. And then I worked at Blackstone Amplifiers, where I work now. Mm-hmm. And part of the job is we sold acoustic guitars as well. And part of the job is me and Matt, who's now the guitarist, we had to set up the acoustics. We just played guitar all day. Yeah, yeah. Chill. That's all right. And, um, because I was sick of music at the time I, I sort of just wasn't interested but then I heard him play all these like jazz chords um, and all these sort of solos like blues solos and that really oh, okay, interest me yeah. so he taught me four chords uh, like jazz chords I went away and made a song out of it and I think it was She was it She? Well, our first yeah, one I think cool. so yeah and then um, made that so that you want to join it he said yeah and then Babelung's then I knew Harry from a previous project so he got involved and then we always we were three piece for because we were together for a year before we even 
did social media gigs, any like no, yeah, really? still just took a whole year out to work out a set, of our, course, our sound, that. and just get a because I didn't want to gig a lot of bands just rush into gigging yeah yeah get and, out there straight away and it's like fair enough you make mistakes everyone makes mistakes but they make the noticeable mistakes do you yeah know what yeah I mean? and also because it's almost publicised as exactly. well to some extent and I think if we're going to do it let's do it properly do you know what yeah, I mean let's, yeah. let's get and, um, I'll get that so we spent a year and we had a first gig at the Lamb Live and a couple months before like we've always said we want a sax player and our guitarist Matt does a lot of function bands as well and um it just happened that he was booked to play the same gig that Willett was there a right. sax player and was like fuck like, when do you find a sax player A that's your age B yeah. that's into the same stuff and like the image yeah, and all that yeah. do you know what I mean so like, you know, we, we latched you. onto him yeah. Yeah, but bet. we tried playing it cool and it was like come to practice see what you think and we'll go from there and then like remember me me Matt and Harry just stared at each other like we fucking need this we need this so it'd be funny yeah. <laughs> yeah. but we were like yeah I mean, if you want to join that's cool yeah, <laughs> yeah. we've got a few <laughs> sax players coming in <laughs> today, so. and then uh, yeah luckily he joined and um, I think one of the first songs we jammed was Fallen oh sick and, um, just jam Fallen I love how you say that and, and that was like, it that no song. because the way we do it and like I said to you earlier I, I mm. heard how, what Cam said last week in terms of he's very structured with his songwriting yeah. he likes to think about we don't it's just okay I'll pick up an acoustic first thing I play first thing I sing and then that's the song and then I so I've written that an acoustic I go to Matt who then jazz up the chords completely yeah um, and then because I'm used to drums when I write something I can hear the drums as well mm. and the bass so that's I tell sort of Harry what I'd like and then he adapts it to what he does and then for the first few months it was a case of like just have free reign on that sax I don't know mm. anything about that yeah yeah and got, and, um, and got close just couldn't and um Nowadays, I've, he showed me a lot of music with horns in it, so I've got right. an idea. I still can't tell him what to play, but yeah, I do, yeah. I'll record it acoustically, and then I'll have like a little mouth trumpet. So I'm like, so yeah, he's he's decent. Like I could just go to him, yeah, I'll play, and, go, and, go, and, go, and, go, and, go, and we do it properly. Yeah. And uh, so that's why I'm quite fortunate. And yeah, and ever since, we just write songs and we've been, been all right. So, just yeah. fell in. Yeah. Okay, so it took you what was it that first year, and then you really she did you. Yes. So the first ever song we did was Shoe Town Blues. Yeah. That was the first ever thing we did. But then we did She, and we thought it might be a bit more radio friendly. Yeah, <laughs> so because I listened, like, and I've obviously been listening to all of it, but, like, went back and did it almost in order, because I like to get a picture of, like, where you went from, and then listen to She, and that is your, like, not that's the least baby long song. Mm. Cause, like, it's a little bit more... doesn't quite have that, like, yeah, special yeah. thing that you've got now. It's... But. Yeah, it didn't... Because at the time, I'd only listened to current music yeah do you know what I mean I hadn't listened to previous music from like decades past and that and then I met Matt who only listens to like, to, like do you know what I mean that blues it, yeah. and that singing and basically I just took a full dive in started like the 40s listening yeah. to um, like Nat King Cole and Julia London and mm. like the Rat Pack and going from that to like Elvis to then the 60s and just going and now I'm in this little Motown soul phase yeah. where I'm still learning and that's how I sound yeah because yeah. you hear she's just a, an indie track really. yeah I thought it was a it's little such a more simple indie repetitive track. and it annoys me because it's the most if we play it live people sing that yeah, 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 sing that yeah, yeah. it catches yeah. then it's and always it's the like, way though isn't you're it? like oh yeah I've heard your band yeah I really like she and I'm just like oh it's a dead track it's like Wonderwall <laughs> though isn't it like they fucking hate that song oh, man, I ain't comparing fucking... any of my songs to one no I mean yeah like fucking hates Wonderwall because everyone's like oh yeah Oasis Wonderwall and he's like mate I've written some genius songs that is not one of them yeah people love of those like um... he's ripped off genius songs <laughs> yeah, <I'm> like, <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> no I like Oasis yeah. whole number whole uh, number story they do. Um, uh, I want to discuss I want to discuss with you because a lot I was listening back to your discography today and we were, we were just chatting about it just having a little listen and I, I found a lot of it sounds very Roy Ayers-esque which is a very like um it's almost a new school jazz. It's that okay, weird. I don't know you. Have you not heard, no. mate? If you haven't heard of Roy Ayers, if you stick Roy Ayers on and play it alongside some of the saxophone stuff that's in your work, it is very similar. It's the same oh. sort of feel to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's really, it's one of the ones that I kind of listen to it, and I'm like, it's this is how I imagine if Roy Ayers now was in this sort of industry, mm. that's how I'd picture him doing it. Yeah. And I can really see. But where, when you decided that shit, we need a saxophone. What what went around? How did that happen? How did you come about being like fuck? Saxophone is needed in this sound. Do you know what? It was never a case of like we need it. Yeah. We, we knew the chance of getting one is pretty slim, mm. so it's just a case of like it would be sick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that we, well, I mean, we still do it now. To be fair, like when we're recording a song, it's like oh, this song would sound killer with like piano. Yeah. Or, this song would sound killer with female vocalist. Luckily. Yeah. 
we know enough people that want to help out and it's like really nice yeah. like when we did Sober Minds I will come back to you sometime, when yeah, we yeah. did Sober Minds it was only last minute on the last day we got El Delaney to come do backing vocals yeah. which obviously she killed it now um, we got Ryan in to do organ sounds and then out of nowhere we got uh, a lovely woman called Becky she's bought a bongos and congas and yeah. it was just a case of like fuck around mate. like let's just add yeah, as much as we can yeah. yeah, and it's sick but in terms of the saxophone it's just we were listening to if you listen to like Soul or Motown yeah. horns were always there yeah. and especially being a three piece getting another guitar there's only so much you can do with that it's mm. not it doesn't give you that much freedom so getting a sax in yeah it's complete, that's like a lead guitar do yeah. you know what I mean because it can feel it's like its own, that. it's its own sound isn't it? Uh, it's, it and I think that is it's sort of everything for you boys I remember find like discovering you mm. and I was literally on Spotify and Falling popped up and I put it on and that start of falling the saxophone and I was like it's, whoa it's hold on what's this and yeah, then it's one that, of the I listened to falling and I remember messaging you straight away and being like baby lung Northampton <laughs> and listen and because you love you love jazz more than, I've, I've never been, been a I've, jazz listener yeah I've been you a have. big fan of jazz I, I messaged I'm you straight away into it. Yeah, yeah I'm still getting grips I, I, yeah. I need to really I need to throw myself into it I just never have like I appreciate it and I enjoy it but I've just never actually sat down and listened to it but I heard that and I really, really enjoyed. It. For me, it's a really nice way to consume jazz. Yeah. Because yeah. like that vibe, but like I still, it's still a really catchy, good indie song. Mm. So I really enjoyed the song. But yeah. then was like messaging was like, oh, you're gonna fucking yeah. love this. Do you, you know what I mean? Because you, you like that vibe on top. You but. sent it through, and saxophones have always been one of my favourite instruments to listen to. Like I've been John Coltrane is like my go-to yeah. jazz artist, and. Um, a bit of Miles Davis as well so that's trumpet so it's like both of them combined is almost like the sound that kind of right. that saxophone sound that you lot capture and it's like mm. I heard it come through and I was like fuck this is this is sweet and it is so unique as well yeah. like it is so unique everything that you lot write and you come out with and keep releasing it just every time you release it gets different and mm. better in a some sense I think it, like I said we never aim to sound different yeah. it's, that's never been the it's just the case of i used to indie music so like I can write a catchy chorus on basic chords mm. and then Matt who's such into his blues and his jazz can just like it's the same chord just different voicing to make it sound quite yeah. Yeah. obscure um, so he does that and then Harry who's into like Tame and Parlor and all that trippy sort of stuff I mean yeah. he's got an eclectic taste but that's the sort of thing so he's quite smooth and like gives it that feel as well And it all just comes it, it feels, just, does feel like natural. it's quite a collab like you were saying earlier there's a lot of different influences mm. it's not the case of you're always on the same page there's a lot of like never no no we mm. we can't really write together no, really we've done it before well like, I've had an idea and we'll try and work on it and practice um, but Matt and Willett they're such into their jazz and, and they're so accomplished musicians that they're really good mm. that, that it almost has to be right let's try something difficult do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so like, I've tried with Willett before, a sax player, where I'll write a four chord song and they go, Yeah, what do you think about this bridge? It's like 16 chords. Yeah. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> but then at the same time, I bring that sort of pop element, like the catchy choruses and the simple verse, chorus, verse. Do you know what I mean? That's mm. what I'm used to. So it's following that structure with this obscure sort of mixed in it. Yeah. I think that's. That's that blend. Just, yeah, just how yeah. it works. But. So you you sing and you play bass. Yeah. And we were saying earlier that's like quite an interesting mix. Like I know a few bands do do it, but like, how did that come about for you? And like, Massive do you enjoy playing of Sting, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I originally played guitar. We did have another bassist, um, but he ended up leaving. And um, it's just hard to find another bassist. Yeah. And um, luckily at the time <laughs> company I worked for bought out a new bass amp I was like alright <laughs> you know yeah. so yeah I got that I for free got a, got a bass and I, I, I do prefer it out of the others at the minute because I was saying to you earlier it's such a the vibrations comes through the floor so you can yeah. feel it so it really helps you get into that state of like going for it and I can sort of not control but I can work with the drummer do you know what I mean like on the timings and stuff because we have to be tight to let the other guys do their mm. thing and yeah uh, yeah, I think it's just I quite enjoy playing bass. Mm. I can't nice balance with the singing alongside it. Yeah, see, this is the only issue. I'd love to be able to do sort of complicated bass lines, so it can be a bit more complex than what I'm doing. Mm. But it's just singing along with it. Yeah, so, no, it's no, tough. I don't practice enough. <laughs> I'm being honest, I don't. Yeah. When you, because you were saying earlier that um, you go about and you spent a year not really touring or doing anything like doing any form of gigs or anything. Mm. Like, well, when when you started doing gigs, how was that for you? Lot kind of going from out of that introverted space to going into more of a 
extroverted performance element like how was that to com- compare, convert over so the other three lads they didn't want to wait a year really they were happy because they love gigging yeah. so they, they were happy to get it there. it was always me and they were like yeah let's go on Instagram I was like no it's just, there's no need like, yeah. let's just get where we are first and then we'll do it but um, for me it was horrible I didn't like it at all really so yeah I just got really anxious and I'm, I've never been a fan of gigging really like, I, I like when I'm up there three songs in or something mm. I'll get into it and if I see people enjoying it I'm, I'll, I'll write that do you know what I mean like, yeah, I, I once get you've got into the it yeah. 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 but it's the first few songs and it, I'm not an anxious person it's not like anxiety or anything like that it's just this could be shit do you know what I mean it's yeah. that and I don't want to I'd like to show the best of what we can do every time and um, so yeah I remember the first gig we played was at Lampy at Lamplight sorry and um <laughs> we were setting up and everyone was in the smoking area so it looked pretty dead and I was like ah, it's one of them it's fine and then just start like playing an intro and that and I'm facing the drummer at this point because that's what I always do I turn around and face the drummer yeah. and sort of get into it and then I know that I've got to sing like the next line so I turn around to sing it's Pac mate people, <laughs> people like, there, like literally like, face there and I was like oh, <laughs> oh my god and it was oh, but I remember even at our first gig and it was literally wall to wall and it was so surreal like it was Sick, it was though. crazy uh, but we'd released She before this yeah and right. even then we're playing it and people are singing She that's and I was that's like, a wild man I was like this is crazy man mm. was like, and then yeah it, gradually since then we've had a lot of people come to gigs so yeah, we, was we've never had because I've been in previous bands where you do play to the sound man yeah, that's not yeah. a, it, I know it's cliche but it's real um but it's not happened in Babylon mm. well apart from Oxford we played in Oxford where the first time it was dead, dead. I was going to say so have you played like like much out of Northampton and it's still been like good crowds or has it been mainly been local for now we've not played much this is the thing yeah so we took a year of getting our sound and then it was a year of doing Northampton mm. which we did and then this year was we're going to try and get out of Northampton it got fucked we got fucked <laughs> yeah. yeah, oh, never mind but um We've played, so Oxford, I just don't think it was well promoted and the band that put it on, I don't think, I don't know if we did our research or not. It was yeah. very different to what we were doing. Oh. Um, but it was a good experience. Yeah, and yeah. We brought family and friends and that. So it did pack out a small room. Yeah. But it was just, it was family and friends, you know what I mean? It's, it's not, not quite, quite the same. It's no one knew. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was, we played a festival in Corby which was pretty sick actually it was <laughs> before we played it started like pissing it down in the rain and um, we just got everyone on stage like it was like we're really? going to play we'll just get everyone on stage everyone oh, try and that sick. and then to that point they're talking to us and it's sort of created it so when we were playing they were well up for it and, oh that's brilliant but we've not, we've not played that much out of Northampton no we just seem to play the Black Prince over and over because <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always like we've, I feel like we've said on this like each week I keep saying about like all these bands coming up if they were gigging, they'd be doing much better. Mm. And do you like, especially with like sober minds? So do you feel like if you'd have released that and then been able to go and like gig it, are you a bit gutted you can't, or because you don't like it, you're a bit like I'm actually happy with where it is. I'm not happy with where it is because whenever I release a single, I want to put a video with it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think it's just a much more rounded package. And but we released it as a song. But we we played we always played it live before anyway. Right. So it wasn't like it was a new track we wanted yeah, to get yeah. out. Um, but my see, my thing instead of as much as it would be good to gig and get people's reaction more people go on YouTube than they do gigs yeah so it depends on what you want if if you're happy with the song and you want to put it out as a product obviously I'd, I'd rather focus on that aspect yeah. but I know gigging's obviously a big part of it and it's it's good to get people's reactions but um, the difference is if you ask for a reaction when you're there they tend to be nice anyway so you want that honest of course yeah yeah, 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 so, yeah. but yeah it's, it's interesting Sober Minds uh, it's obviously Cam shouted him out yesterday but I'll shout out Mark Cannot Lodge as well for that because yeah. he, he produced that for us as well and everything Cam said last week is exact that's insane correct. we didn't like realise exactly. you have the same producer and as, it's the first like, time we worked with him he's really oh with Baby I've known him since I was about 14 yeah but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but with Baby Long with Baby Long yeah because Cam preaches about him and, mm. and all that and I know you were saying earlier the same sort of stuff and that's again like for you is that a big influence on what you're doing like is he or because again to me I always saw a producer as a band as a song mm. you take it in and they you know they change a couple of levels and they just make it sound a bit cleaner and then it goes and I was like I didn't realise till I got as in depth that it's a little bit more like we've got an idea and they help you formulate the whole song but like for you was it that big of an influence or not everyone's like that no some people will just record you so like when, when we did Casualty and we did the EP we did that yeah. uh, parlour with uh, in Ketrin with a mate of mine Jay Russell right. great like great at what he does but he, he's a drummer mm. so he was listening to like certain instruments and he was like okay th- we could make it sound like this and that and that was good whereas Mark he's a songwriter 
So yeah. he listened to it as a song. So it's a case of like, oh, what about this chorus or this? Uh, I mean, he didn't do much of that with us, to be fair. Mm. So in mind, he just, because it was different to what he's done before, because we yeah. went in there saying, we don't want to polish sound. Listen to a load of like 70s, 80s music or like mm. that soul stuff. That's what we want, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like sort of a bit lo-fi. So he was well up for that sort of stuff and he just got our references straight on. Yeah. And um, he's not afraid, like if I suggest an idea, he's not afraid to go, nah. And yeah, vice versa, yeah, yeah. he can give an idea and I'll be like, nah. And he's cool with that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's no, there's no ego there. It's all about all. that relationship, isn't it, really, yeah. in that sense? Because you've got to be able to back and forth with it. It's, mm. like it's, it's sort of, at the end of the day, it's your song, yeah. but he's got to... He's, mate, he's such a good songwriter. Like, I can list off all the bands he's been in. Uh, so he's like, uh, I check them out as well because they'll probably be your cup of tea. Like Uptown Decadence Unit and Civilians, okay. uh, great bands. But then he just stops and it's really frustrating for yeah. me. Yeah. Because like I said, I've, I was known until I was 14 when I played drums in a band. Like, and mm. I played drums with him in his band. And like, the first time I went to the pub was with him. And like, so he's such a oh, sound shit, lad. Yeah. And I go to gigs with him in London. Like, he's such a sound guy and he's such a, he's switched on. Like, like yeah. he's a sick front man as well. Is it? Mate, so I said, think Liam Gallagher like that. He's got that actually. Yeah. Like, Sounds like oh, you can right make that. it big. I'm yeah. like, we're getting, getting back into it. That's yeah. But yeah. It's got to be. And uh, just, you can hear with the work he's putting out with Garden and. Yeah. He's, he's quality yeah he's done bits of them I think so that's absolutely cool. he's an incredible he's, he sounds like he's an incredible influence to yeah. all of you especially you young, young lads that are like coming up and coming through mm. and with new new sounds he's still trying to like tone to yeah, some yeah, extent yeah. so it's the thing like I said because I was so young when I, when I met him originally mm. then, you get a lot of people that are there and they sort of act like why you talk to me yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. like yeah. how big I am whereas he just made you feel like no matter how old or young you are like if you can play good music you can play yeah, good music calm. if you're in yeah so I think we need more of that so what's know. so it's in, so what's your goal then it's a little bit of a generic question but like because especially for you because a lot of people would be like I want to play gigs in front of this many people mm. and that but if for you where do you see it going where do you want it to be over the next couple of years like is is it in a case of wanting to get an album out or is it like what's the vibe yeah so long term obviously we, we need to kick out of Northampton yeah no more. I want to go to sort of Camden Birmingham Nottingham in the north there's more of a scene for what our, our sort of stuff is so it'd be good yeah. to get out of there and sort of hopefully get into that um, I wouldn't mind doing a, a Baby Long short film you know not oh, really? about the band yeah, an actual yeah. story and it's mm. got the sort of music to go with it and the visuals yeah that would be like we, a proper project we did plan it in terms of the video of Casualty falling and then there was another one it was going to be a three piece mm. we put it together it just didn't work out so I'd, I'd like to do something like that because the falling video is good I enjoyed That's that That's hard work man Was it? So, we're not great planets At all <laughs> I'm getting that vibe <laughs> it, was, it was like two weeks Before the shoot date And we were like Alright we need to think Of an idea now then boys And uh, we bought this place And we'd, we'd gone in there And we had the concept It was gonna look like It's just one take yeah. And it really, I think it, it was probably only About three takes Like there was little bits Where it cuts Like All right, next yeah, one yeah. But then you have to do loads So if you mess it up Like there's times Where I'm sat there And I've got to sing At the camera And I laugh And it's like oh Because oh, right. the guitarist Has now got to do yeah. music Wind over here got, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so basically we went there a storyboard ish <laughs> and mm. um, we didn't know what props they had mm. it was mate went there they had a, he was like yeah do you want a coffin I was like alright mm. so got two bathtubs it was, oh, it was just <laughs> the weirdest thing but such a sick place that's fun and, where um, was that um, Natural Light Studios in Whedon in Whedon I've okay. known it yeah because strange um, place that'd be a studio it's mad it's just like it looks like a derelict old building yeah and it's it was, essentially what it is yeah. I suppose isn't it <laughs> and, and I'd been there a couple of times through work as well because yeah. we did it there so um, I knew the bloke and he was just so not like we had like fake cigarettes because think you can't smoke in it and he'd come in he's like yeah I've got some whiskey and cigars here for you boys he's like yeah just spark up and I was like <laughs> oh cook a car happy just, days Oh man! Yeah, so, so we, we had this room booked for five hours, and we had to think, right? Okay, we got to think outfit changes. We have got to think what props we want. So, in terms of the vision for that, does that come from you, or is it a group, or is there someone that that likes the like the video element of it, or yeah, is it all collaborative? So we always say, first of all, that there's five of us in Babylon. Right. So there's obviously us in the band, four of us, and then there's four. Ryan Johnson. Right. He's a photographer, and he does all our videos for us. Oh, sick! sick. And right. he's been involved since day one. Like he's in all the group chats. Like he helps us choose what ideas and oh. stuff like that. So so when it comes to videos it's mainly me and him yeah so like the casualty video yeah the lads didn't even know what we were doing until it's finished oh shit so like Fair. yeah it's just that creative freedom which is nice but falling we all chipped in yeah and we, we all sort of said oh what about this because it was ideas, it was to be straight it was a weird sort of concept and it was just a blend in and yeah it, yeah it was alright it was pretty cool yeah I liked it it was good I like. I you could see there was a concept there mm. and like you said the, 
the one take thing and it was like a lot of like going to the wall and then pan out and yeah. you change seat and like, there's a lot of like good ideas that you can see coming through there but I've got my daughter in a gas mask on it yeah, was that, was was that, that your, your daughter, daughter was yeah, it we were thinking that I was like yeah. what is where is this joke yeah. Yeah. Bro, I, was, yeah. I literally I literally she hated said it. She, <laughs> <literally> <laughs> did. she was like so heavy I was like come oh, on just bigger girl just because you talked for a little bit I was like no I can't even done my own genuinely said to me watch it that must be one of their daughters because I was like there's no way they've like paid someone to be like I want to shout out a fan a friend of ours we found Matt Denton I think it was his like his sister his brother works for IMDB yeah so if you put in IMDB and fall in and my daughter's got like a little thing now it's like, no like, way that's that really that like, cool. famous that's what that is you're on IMDB you're famous <laughs> that is, that's, that's another level one that is big time video. you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 big time but, um, I ain't got one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but your daughter that, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. that means that you are big time <laughs> no that's class that is class that's an interesting it's an interesting idea as well for that video to mm. make it go how come how did you get into that then how did you get into the videography side of it because obviously you have a massive influence in what you as a band does but how because a lot of people have to have been into the industry or stuff beforehand before they start getting that visuals and being mm. able to put it on paper how did that start for you it is with Babylon I never did it in any previous bands or anything at all mm. um, it's weird because when I write a song it will be acoustic Mm. And obviously it's in my head I've got the other instruments in there and I've sort of got the visuals there as well yeah. it sort of all just comes at, at once which is mm. pretty and then it's a case of talking to Ryan like, is this possible so yeah, there's yeah. ideas I've had it's just not possible so it's and I prefer being behind the because I want to be creative Yeah. I don't want to be the guy stood in front of me getting told what to do Yeah. I'd yeah, rather yeah. be behind the, the camera the director not the f- actor and in it, that's anything. what I said at the end of the day we're a band we're not actors mm. yeah. so do we need to be in front of the camera I mean we will to a certain point but for every video I think if you put a story there or something interesting because mm. so many bands will just play and they, do you know what I mean they're playing their instruments on the camera and it's yeah, like yeah. okay do you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Like, there's, not, there's not as much a creative element I just want to do yeah. something different yeah, um, yeah, that's interesting. What about like um, like album covers and stuff? Is that like again to do with you? Like I like the so mine's one, and you had like the bottle of wine and like spilling out, and yeah, like yeah, yeah. and then even like to the t-shirt designs, like the falling and stuff like that. Is that your area of expertise, or is that someone else? No, to be honest, mate, the artwork uh, <laughs> is part of the poor planning. So like <laughs> she, for example, we had it released, and we were like, oh, we need an artwork for it. And luckily, Harry, our drummer, had just been to like. Uh, Rome, I think it was. Oh, yeah. He just sent through a load of photos he took on there. <laughs> oh, it's just a, job, though. It's just a building. We're like, all right, cool, that'll do it. And then Sam. Casualty, Ryan had just been on a photo shoot. He was like, that's a sick photo. We'll use that. Yeah. And, but Sober Minds, we had a bit more, this is what we wanted, and it was my mm. wife that drew it. Was it? Oh, yeah, because you were saying earlier that she does it, and I was thinking, did she do that? Because yeah. it, it looks sick. I really like that. It's a, so, it's a, I think that looks really good. So, uh, yeah, she did that. I'm trying to think of anything else. Shoe Town Blues, we worked with a guy called Joel Dorr. Uh, he does loose enzyme I think it is mm. um, it's sort of like collage and that sort of thing so mm. we've got Ryan to take photos um, of the two people there in casualty actually he's oh, a photo true. shoot of them uh, sort of that and then Joel sort of collaged it all up and yeah, that's just, just what it was he did the falling design as well oh so, that is sick um, so yeah it's just cool man. yeah really cool yeah it carries it much further doesn't it like I think it does add to that element and yeah. like obviously now like you've got the vinyl out and stuff like that and it like that artwork is so useful it is like to me that is, it is like crazy. if I was in a band that would be the sort of stuff that I'd be excited about like Mate, having that physical the vinyls element. it wasn't even our idea Really? We, we, obviously we'd love to do it but there's just so much money to do it yeah, yeah, yeah it's not an easy there. thing it's to a do pipe it? dream and um, we just got a message out of the blue this is what I was saying we're, we're so lucky if we record a song we've got musicians that want to help out yeah. and we've got people that want to come to gigs and like we've just been very fortunate in that sense and we just got a message out of the blue from the Eight Limb uh, production guys um, just saying look we want to work with local artists now mm. we want to get vinyls pressed for them come and work together and so we met up with Garrett Baldy, was signed some contracts and that, and yeah, they're just, you go. away they go. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. How did they go for you? Like they they sell pretty. We had nothing to do with it. Really? Yeah, no. Yeah. no. Like I said, we, we don't do the sales. It's just our songs, and obviously we'll promote it and try and sell it at our shows and that. Mm. Yeah. Um, we sorted the pre-orders out, and they went pretty well. Yeah. Um, which was which is nice and then Spinner Disc has just reopened which oh, I didn't I didn't know about them and then like I was talking to my parents like yeah we'd go there all the time it's like so nostalgic yeah yeah, yeah. Right. But, mate Brilliant. I just didn't do it and so to have a vinyl in there it's pretty cool mm. right? and uh, I think they're cool. doing That's quite it. a bit mm. but yeah like, I, nef- I haven't even got one really? yeah you say I haven't got a t-shirt I haven't, I haven't, I haven't got, got a t-shirt, vinyl I haven't got anything, wow. I haven't got anything no, yeah. no. fair enough I like, I like that you do kind of take your way 
take yourself away from that a little bit because it just lets it kind of crack on and yeah, do its yeah. own thing, isn't it? Mm. You're saying you're it's, in uh, the bands, like, yeah. talk us yeah, through some I of that. To, I want to know, talk I wanna know a little bit well. about that. Like, were there some fucking failures? Did you have some <laughs> success? Like, come on, what happened? Yeah, oh, mate. So the first band I was in, I played drums, it was it was Blink-182. Do you know what I mean? It was just okay, really, yeah, yeah. Is this a young age sort of thing, or is this yeah, a bit older? Yeah, still, no, no, no. Oh, pff, how old have I been? Secondary, like year nine, secondary school. Okay, yeah. So yeah, what's yeah, that? Like so 14, 15 maybe? Like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That, 14, that 14, 13, 14 sounds about right. We probably played about four or five gigs at this gig club. So oh, it was fair. cool. Like it, it was a good experience for me. It's the first gig I've mm. ever done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're not including the steel bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mate. I include that. That is, that <laughs> would not. be on my CV as performer. <laughs> <laughs> it probably fucking is. <laughs> but yeah, so I did it with them. And then I got into this other band which was more Arctic Monkeys we were literally an Arctic Monkeys cover band for a while as well oh really yeah we got paid for that it was pretty cool that's brilliant and, that's um, it yeah so they that did alright we were playing quite a bit we did a like, near packed crowd of pitch drum and stuff and Ooh, that was quite cool. cool but they'd again just fizzle out and then I got on a it was every every with every band it's like I get to a certain point and it just dies yeah so like yeah. my last so band so is that with the members fizzle out individually or you personally no, no, fizzle not, out not me personally it just will fizzle it's out just did the whole thing um, yeah and then my previous band before this one which was the first time I played guitar and sang we were gigging in Camden as well mm. and we oh, were literally just it. breaching out was that that We Animals that's it, it We right? Animals yeah and that was again a lot different that was just more indie again so yeah. um, that's why with this band I've sort of approached it differently because with every other band before especially when I'm writing I just I want people to like it yeah. so I sort of say ah, what Catfish and Botman are popular right now it is a Catfish and Botman do you know what I mean yeah, and that sort of stuff yeah. whereas with this one without it's not how can I feel about it? I suppose I just it's not a case of not caring but it's just like if you like it you like it that's cool yeah. mm. but this it's is your how I feel at this very moment that's how this and I think that's why we sound different yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's just however I feel at that moment and I'm getting constantly showed new music from the guys in the band and that it's just yeah, it's cool. So it's this it. one's been most successful. If yeah, you say yeah, that, but mm. yeah, man. yeah, I think this one's got the most potential anyway. A hundred percent. It's got a sax player, you know. Yeah, I was going to say you're sorted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's calm now as a sax player, like it is what it that's is. That's it. No, <laughs> but that's, that's, that's what's calm for me. Like all joke aside, because I'm playing on that, and obviously it is nerve wracking being the front man and singing. Mm. But I'm, I'm still very awkward in between songs you know you have to do the whole talking thing yeah. it's normally just oh you're alright <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's what you need though yeah, yeah. yeah calm next just song still like. with me <laughs> <laughs> but having a sax T-side no one sees that there's like oh wow well, yeah he can yeah. play crap you know what I mean People it like, generates yeah. excitement though doesn't exactly. it, it and does. then I've got Matt on guitar the next time just riffing solos and mm. that and it's just like cock out like, I'm just going to chill in the background and just yeah, like vibe with it that's nice though so you can concentrate on what you want to do and how you want to do it and you've yeah. got a lot going on like what's interesting though is with people like Matt and Willett they never want a solo really yeah really? and it's not like so Matt's very happy just playing chords he can do as many solos as you want yeah like, I was going to say because he does doesn't he yeah yeah like. and there's times I'm like mate you need to solo in this bit yeah yeah you need to solo and um and I never tell him what to do that's free mm. I'm just like do and um, but yeah he's happy just playing chords and then there's times where we'll be playing and like going through a new song it's like yeah sounds really good and then Willie will go does this song need sax <coughs> I'm just like what, what do you mean <laughs> of course you need sax and he's like I don't know they don't want to overcomplicate it yeah, yeah, yeah and I yeah. think that's what's good about this band is that we all focus on the song no yeah. one tries to outshine each other yeah, yeah I like that and that it's is... um, yeah it's nice it's yeah, a good it's a way to mix it. about it. You've been in the Northampton scene now for how long have you lot been together? Probably three years now. Well, three two years. years gigging. Yeah. Mm. So fair old wax. Well, what's the best gigs you've played around here? Because obviously the Northampton scene is pretty, it's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Like we're mm. we're pretty lucky considering around the, the place. Like, considering the, the 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 place that it is and the area that it all stems from. Yeah. Do you know what I mean like it's a fairly good run for you? Like, well, what? Where's the best been? Where's the best one you've played? Where's the biggest fucking one that you wish you just hadn't been booked at? Like, <laughs> where? What's it for you? Um, I can only speak for myself. Obviously, I can't speak yeah, for the course. other boys. For me, the best gig we ever did was our own EP show at the Black Prince. Yeah, because that's cool. mate, the whole night was mad because um. We had, have you had a tragic? Yeah. So we had this uh, local sort of punk band, we had them support us. Oh, shit. Because we thought they're killing it at the minute. Mm. So, do you know what I mean? We'll put them on, and we're so diverse that we like to think people that come listen to us like sort of anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we put them on, didn't go down that well. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Really? And, it, and it was such a shame because we loved them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we just talked to them afterwards, and they were like, yeah, not really feeling. Uh, and I was like, sorry. Like, I'm, I generally, I'm sorry because I thought this was going to be so much better. Yeah. But then 
so I'm looking out and it's just dead. I was like, oh, this is our night. Shit, so I'm yeah, like, yeah, put yeah. this on. Then by the time we're up there playing, it's packed. And it was just oh, like, shit. and it was, the EP had come out like, I think that day maybe, or maybe in the day before. Fuck. And people just belting the lyrics out. Mm. That's brilliant. And I was just like, man, this is, and there's times I'm, I, there's people have videoed it. I'm just laughing. Cause it's just like, it's such like, a surreal. Yeah. And it's, um, that sort of crowd, you can say anything and they'll give it straight back. Do you yeah, know what I'm yeah, so yeah. I should have clicked right there on the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, which is, yeah, that I think for me that was the best one. So, what's your, like, a little side question to that, your favourite song to play in that sense? Have you got a favourite one that you're like, I like putting this in the set list because I'm excited to play it to? Like, when the crowd's feeling it, which one are you excited to get out? Falling. Is it? Yeah. We always, I think so. We put that last, mm. and it's like people know it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And the, for it's me, iconic. That intro is iconic to me now. I'm like, you hear it. That was like, a mouth moment. That was in one practice. The first time I just went, do you want to do? do, do, do and then he went, do, do, did it. Do, and the guitar yeah. learning, it was just boom. That's it. Then yeah. again, sorry, man. That's <laughs> 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 right. There you go. <laughs> but um, yeah, they just bashed it out. So I'm quite Sick. fortunate. But um, falling, I think, is good because we're not a band that you dance to. Do you no. know what I mean? We're not a band that's you sort of mosh to or go yeah. mad. It's, not, it's very just bopping on it's that. It's vibe yeah. to. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And so like when it kicks in with like the drums and the bass, ooh, and it goes into it, mm. I, I just like watching people's head bop like that. Generally. Do you know what I mean? They just yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and then it gets to the loud bit. And then like these the solos come in, you just ah, yeah, and, all... and then I have to shout the vocals so everyone in there shouts it back. Yeah, at me. yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, it's it cool. builds that song, doesn't so it? For a bit of fan a... engagement, that's my that's favorite. It. It's not my favorite that's song good. by far, yeah. but I'm pretty sick of the song now. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been listening to Eastern District Fairy Tale a lot over the last few days. Because I've been like, I've been really going for it because <laughs> obviously always listen to it. But like, I've been like so minds and fallen. I've been listening to constantly for months. But like the other stuff I listen to but like then I, I listened to that properly for a few times and was like this is a really good song mm-hmm. but that, again that's that's quite far removed from some of the other stuff like, yeah, like it's yeah, got yeah. its complete own vibe but like do you do you like performing all of those sort of songs or do you feel a bit like oh, I'm just going to bang like Eastern Dish Fairy Tale out and yeah well, that's been cut from the set has it from previous yeah, ones that, yeah I love that song um, <laughs> which I think is cool but I think like that and Silhouettes and all that's right, been cut yeah. mm. another it was on the EP because we only keep two songs on the EP yeah yeah, yeah. and um, and like, even to the point now especially with lockdown we've got six or seven new ones yeah, yeah, yeah. that that will be the album mm. we won't gig them if it's up to me we won't gig them for a while yeah. but I want to save them like there'll be new ones that will sort of tickle through yeah, yeah, yeah. but in my opinion these new ones make Falling look a bit crap do you know really? what I mean? Like I'm that, yeah. I, I have a pretty good sense of when I write. I'm like this can yeah. play actually. Yeah. But, um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping for good things. But um, sober minds is we start with sober minds. Yeah. Because it's just straight in. It's just yeah, you know, it is, and then like so it gets attention. But um, shoot down blues for me. I think it's my, I my, like my favorite. Blues. I just love the, the name. I literally read it. And was like yes. <laughs> shoot what I mean. Like, it's, come uh, on. <laughs> it's the first song we ever did. Yeah, like wow. ever together really? and I said to you earlier yeah. I've still got a clip on my phone because obviously we'll uh, just click record on the phone jam it so we've got an idea Yeah, yeah. and even down to the guitar solo every note of what he played the first ever time is the same now wow and it's um, that's cool. unreal <laughs> mate the way I, the way I wrote that is have you ever heard of Jordan McCamper have you heard of this so uh, mate he's, a, he's a good mate of mine yeah from we went to Northampton Uni together and he's blown up like he's really? yeah yeah he's not, he is signed he's, he lives in London now um, do you ever remember a show on BBC One it was like Our Girl I took a song yeah. to yeah, 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 yeah. what's the name Stacey from East Fenders, yeah. isn't it? so his song is the theme music for that fuck off yeah really? yeah yeah Sick. and, they, like, cool. and he's, they used his songs in the Levi's advert you know the jeans oh, so like shit. he's pro- he's getting Oof. mate he's milli- cool, millions like. of streams on that's so, mega yeah. and so basically obviously we were just friends so he came out and we were going to have a writing session together I thought I was writing for him Mm. He thought he was right for me. <laughs> so, oh, shit. so I'd written the chords to Shoe Town Blues and like the little the fiddly little lines and that. Yeah. And um, I was like, "What do you think of this?" So and he said, "He's like, yeah, it's a good song actually. Let me help you write that song for you." <laughs> and it's me. Like, oh, you can have this one. <laughs> um, so yeah, he helped me write like the lyrics and the melodies. We just bounced off each other with that one. Oh, interesting. And then he never used it. And then Baby Long formed, and I was like, oh, oh, "I love that." Yeah. Song. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I think that one. He's still a shoot time, but it's quite a personal song. And it's... Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's relevant, isn't it? And it's local. And... Yeah, I like it. But yeah, I think with... I mean, I, I do like riding around Northampton because that's it's what I know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
but I, yeah, I want to sort of get away from mm. just that as well. So, but I don't want to write love songs all the time. So, nah. yeah. so we've got a song called Perfect, which I think will probably be the next release. Oh, really? And it's quite personal in that. And that goes real personal into like my sort of what's happening in my life. Yeah. I'm quite enjoying it. It's quite therapeutic at the minute. To yeah. sort of, but it's, it's also quite awkward because there is stuff about family and friends, yeah. do you know what I mean? So you just like... Oh. Yeah, it's almost like, you, do you want to release that out to yeah. the world or do you want to keep mm. it a personal thing to yourself? But I'm excited to it. What sort of vibe is it? What sort of thing are you going with? Similar to... It's similar to Sober Minds and for, it's a bit more steady. Yeah. Um, it's a sort of catchy chorus again to it, jazz chords and a, and a pop, stru- pop structure, you know? So mm. yeah. I think it'll be a... Uh, It'd be a good one. I like that. That's cool. good. So about like the Northampton scene, mm. what is your opinion of it? Have you got much opinion of it? Do you think like <clears throat> in terms of other bands and how they do and how you've done and then like even like venues and how do you see it? Like do you wish you were somewhere else or do you like the Northampton scene or I like the Northampton scene, of course well, I suppose it's all I know really. Mm. Um I do like it. And I I understand it's a lot more advantageous as a band because it's a short it's a small town I beg your pardon you're not competing with much yeah so whereas like if you gig in Camden you've got bands that are doing the circuit for years and years and years yeah, from all and they're the only shop. just getting there yeah do you know what I mean yeah. whereas we can come out play three or four gigs and because it's different people sort of know us gravitate I mean? so, yeah. yeah yeah it's getting that but then the difficulty is obviously getting out of Northampton yeah, yeah. Um, I think the main issue with Northampton bands is they'll reach a level and then they think they're better do you know what I mean? There's a lot of people that are like that, if I'm being deadly honest. That's why I, I'm i quite introvert anyway, so I don't go out and mess with that whole yeah, local yeah, don't scene. Mix as much. Um, I was listening to them and I'll share stuff and buy CDs and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, not support a big, it, but... No, but yeah, I, I can't. Because especially when you're in a band, mm. people in other bands want to talk to you and it's just like, and they can get a bit... I think you've got to be real with yourself that although yeah. you're doing so well in Northampton... It's Northampton. Yeah. So yeah, are you, yeah, are you going to pull town. that crowd in Camden or in Birmingham or do you know what I mean? Are you can. Yeah. So you've got to be a bit more. And I think a lot of we should be helping each other. Yeah. So of there's new bands coming through. We should be like jump. Let's jump on a stage like on a set with me. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like open yeah. for us and build your way that way. And we, Baby Lung, definitely love to do it. And we want to do that with more musicians. Like the first gig back after lockdown, I want it to be us for. I want it to be a keyboard, another guitar, more horns, backing vocals. Yeah, I just want to fill a stage. Setup, yeah. Yeah. Sick musicians that people might not have heard previously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just be like, and that's how I want to collab more and do more with Northampton actors for videos and yeah. more producers and that sort of stuff. So um, I just worry that a lot of Northampton bands, especially young ones coming through that are at college or something like that, yeah. they tend to gravitate towards what's sort of popular there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you're getting a lot of sort of grunge bands and punk bands and mm. obviously we know for metal music so, so it's all there and I just I want people to be a bit more original just mix yeah, it yeah. up like we're so lucky in this generation that because you think previously you had a genre and you had to stick with that genre so you're either an indie band or yeah. you know what I mean you can't there's no whereas now it's such a mismatch you, you can be anything you want, you want. Yeah. and it's the people that are mixing it up now that are do you know what I mean getting recognised well, yeah. so don't be afraid to add a saxophone in or don't be afraid yeah. to uh, uh, run a cello mate get back on that <laughs> that's still you, pan you and cello with mentioned. us if you learn mate, cello I'm telling you I'm, <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna pull it out I'm gonna buy one I'm gonna get on oh, eBay I'm gonna get on I'd, eBay I'd love it Joe's gonna come up here in the next couple of days. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'd leave. I'd be like, yeah, I'm not you, mate. Yeah, see you later. But, um, nah, yeah, I do get you, and I think like there should be more coming out of Northampton for me because mm. I think it is it is a bit of a creative hub, and I think there's a lot of really talented people in it. And I, I don't know, like for me, the only you know you can name like Slow Time that's come out of Northampton. Yeah. But other than that, there's not been loads over the last few years that have really like gone into mainstream and. I suppose like, I've been I've been explaining to a lot of people because in the I obviously we do a podcast on the indie scene, but like I also know quite a bit about the grime and the hip hop yeah. scene to some extent, and there's quite a lot of grime music coming out of Northamptonshire. So as like as Joe was saying, as a creative hub, mm. there is quite a lot of video producers around. There is mm. quite a lot of people that can actually produce decent music. There is a lot of people that are doing almost like what we're doing as well and creating something for ourselves. And I think it's a it's a strange old area, even though like, yeah, we're so close to London, we can't be involved in the London scene yeah. quite yet. But there is people like Izzy Gibbs and Rawser and boys like that that still are coming through and making waves on Rise FM and making waves on BBC One Extra and places like that. And it's like this strange creative hub where I'd love to see more people coming from mm-hmm. and more people like 
testing boundaries, testing boundaries to things because it's end of the day we're not in London, so you're not going to be able yeah. to fit a you're not going to be able to fit a box that's going to yeah. get you that's quite tickets nice, sold. It? It's a bit more freedom. Yeah, that's it. the other thing I find with Northampton bands is a lot of them have their own friendship groups. So within a friendship group, you'll create other bands and they're mm. always going to get an audience because they're, they're friends. So you know I mean, they're yeah, always going to yeah, come yeah. and then that's how they get known that way. And they're not, might not even necessarily be good, but they're getting a crowd because they're within that group. Yeah. So it's the people that aren't in that group. So previously, though, I've, I've never been part of that. So like I said, I'm sitting in the Eastern District, whereas they're sort of more town-based. Mm. So worlds never cross. And um, I've always been there like, oh yeah, come and gig with you. So, no. Nah. Oh, all right, okay. Yeah, so there's, sounds, there's never right. that opportunity. Yeah, it's who you know, so that's what you know, isn't it? For Babylon, for me, that's why I'm so proud of it because I am just a little council estate, Eastern District lad. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I don't hang out with that crowd. I don't know any, like, most of it. But now they're at our shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now they're opening. For, do you know what I mean? So it's, I'm quite proud about that. To be mm. honest. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's where the songs stand on their own. You know, yeah. do you know what I mean? When we first started, we, we didn't have many people come see us. It was just for word of mouth with she. Yeah. And luckily, people came along and. I'm just proud of That's how it goes, though, isn't it? That's how it goes. That's how it starts. You've got to start just, somewhere and then it just keeps ticking up. Like, as I've said of pretty much all bands, like, it is a shame that, like, this year could have been huge for you. Mm. And it's, you could have branched out in Northampton and obviously everything has stopped that, but it's a little bit of a shame. But, it also yeah. gives you more time, though, to reflect on what you've made already and have mm. them visuals for as soon as everything gets going again and you mm. want to make these videos and make these short films, it almost is like a storyboard period, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. like what well, I like looking at. For you, at especially, it, so. I feel like you're, you like that take the time and like quite nice to have a year and yeah, do I mean, that and do this and then okay we'll do a few gigs and like maybe the other boys are more like oh I wish we were gigging that and you're like I'm already making the next one yeah, yeah, like, like, I'm already there I'm doing, that's this, what I'm doing that like. I did um, an interview on BBC North Fans the other day and they were saying yeah your last single I completely forgot about Side of Mine <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you know yeah I mean? which one was that because <laughs> no, 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 like, we're already we've got the next two singles ready we like we just need to go and record them yeah. but then we're already working on the album next yeah, yeah. Really new stuff so it, it is always forward thinking it comes through, yeah. we just need to plan a lot better and I think our downfall at the minute is in terms we need to push like social media more yeah and we it's need massive. to you need to think you need to focus on that sort of stuff on the numbers and mm your reach and stuff mm. um, just feel a bit lazy but it's not, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, but I get a feeling that it's not your mindset to strive for numbers and strive for followers and like not like as you said like it's not that you don't care but it's just like it's just not the way that mm. you see it it's more about the song yeah, and I guess yeah, the point definitely. is if the song's good enough it'll, the song's, yeah, it'll just the run, song's good it? enough like social media and that will always 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 help you push it but and that's the thing because we don't heavily promote the social media side of anyone that does follow us it's, they like us yeah exactly and so that, like yeah. it's it's quite nice because I get through points where I'm like I can't but like, I'll be happy to quit music do you know what I mean like, mm. I've just I've done it for so long I work in music do you know mm. what I mean it's, but then I'll get a mess. Well, we'll get a message on the band account it's like oh, I love this song uh, I played this in school with my friends or mm. when your missus come through and, and asks us the opinion, it's just little things like that you're like yeah yeah, cool, yeah. Let's go. yeah, yeah, yeah let's I mean? get it's it just, and that's why I suppose when you're gigging and when you're in it and people it's encouraging they're loving it it's like all right cool I need to keep going and keep ticking through with it and I'd, I'd rather that I think because it's more drive yeah whereas if I was just like oh, I've got this song and then this song this song and it's a bit crap and yeah yeah and you, yeah I had thousands of followers but no messages it's just like it's getting busy it's about it's what you're prioritising yeah. yeah absolutely and I think that's really important especially for you lads as well especially uh, up and coming scene mm. still and being as almost active with followers as possible and getting involved with everyone and yeah. keeping it almost like true to you because like you are a nice lad and a lad that actually you can hold a conversation mm. and you almost get some of these people that are involved and kind of see themselves a little bit more above like you were saying earlier yeah. can't have that conversation I think that's really important just to build mm. yourself and build a fan base that are kind yeah, of course. about it for you yeah. lot mm. definitely yeah for sure I wanted to get into the story before we move on because I feel like we've already been going a while I wanted to get into this story of um of you knowing Slow Tie from younger days. Mate, yeah, like, we're, we're not, <laughs> we're not that close. I, no, no, this is it, you've said it now. So, <laughs> yeah. Max Riley is Slow Tie's best friend in yeah, the world. Yeah. Uh, and she's now click, <laughs> clickbait, you yeah. found it. Yeah, no, clickbait yeah. it. <laughs> best friend. Um, but yeah. We went to the same school when he was a year younger than me. And uh, I was the kid that sold cans. 
you know what I mean? It's hard new everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was. Kans a, isn't like a. It's not a Northampton <laughs> slang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just let's throw this out. Let's throw this out. Let's throw this out. We have a few people in my like, Liverpool <laughs> way. It's not Northampton slang for anything else. Yeah. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> so I was selling heroin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's clear it up, Greg. Oh, he was, was selling smack coke. Of the shoes. <laughs> you thinking I'm selling cans of drink? <laughs> no, but no. Everyone, everyone, people in school used to sell cans of coke and Pepsi. Yeah, 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 choice. yeah. I was like, right, I'll come in with Dr Pepper and Final Fruit Twist. Ooh, yeah, come on there's a market now I'm going to fucking have it until mate the younger years started selling like cigarettes and condoms I'm like, nah, <laughs> nah, so not... breaking bad I'm doing it they're all nicked because they ended up moving to coke <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, um, no and so I'd know everyone from that and I was also known as the kid that played drums the so if anyone, yeah, yeah because I just was like, I used to play drums on mm. lunch breaks and all that sort of stuff and um, so I'd talk to him through that and yeah, I was just obviously known him through that. And then yeah, I'd bumped into him sick. a few times sort of over the years and that mm. as well. And I mean, I'm happy for him to do what he do. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, it's mad. You're saying he wasn't massively musical throughout school though. From what I've, like I say, closer friends yeah, may yeah, say yeah. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But from what I, I've never known him to be music. And because I was the kid who played drums in school, yeah. if there was anything musical, I was involved. Yeah, so yeah, I always yeah. saw it. I, ne I never saw him in any of them. That's mm. mega. That is and crazy then, as well. And that's a, for us, like, it's wild to... I baffles me still that he is as big as he is and mm. just literally from like oh, round, the, round the corner from where you're from or like do you yeah, know what I mean or it's yeah. like do you know what I mean it's 15, 20 minutes so the point like you're here, at like, uni and I'm like and people are like oh so whereabouts are you from and I said I'm from and they're like oh I like slow tie do you know what I mean yeah. that's like yeah, 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 that's yeah. the first thing that or like it used to be like you know you, near Milton Keynes yeah, you know Princess Lincoln, Diana or, or <laughs> yeah literally or people like like lads knowing who Northampton Town are yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's it do you know what I mean or Saints like a lot of the rugby lads are like Saints yeah calm but now it's literally like the first one you always get is like Oh right, it sounds like where Slotar's from. I'm like, fuck, he's like he's putting it on the map, and that's like yeah. that's why I think that like, more there should be more because there's, there's so, so there's much so talent much that should well, be putting like, on the map. Yeah, absolutely, and it is just getting there, isn't it? I think another issue with the Northampton scene mm. is you've got places you can gig. So, like I said, the Black Prince, uh, Lamplighter, and the Garibaldi, mm. that sort of stuff. But then the next step up from that is Roman, the main stage, yeah, Roman, or yeah. Pitch Drone. Mm. and it's such a big gap yeah it's a big joke because so at like, the end of the day like Blackpink's like just boozers and, yeah. and they're just pubs just aren't they pubs, do you know what I mean yeah. really but we so like we've played Roman in the main stage a few times but I don't think we'd be confident enough to put a night on yeah. I don't know if we'd get enough of a crowd yeah. it's just one thing to fill out Black Prince it's, do you know what I mean where it's what 100 people maybe yeah, yeah. and then you've got to double that with um with Roadmender and obviously you've got to pay for that so it's up to you to cover it or not exactly. you, know? so, yeah, fucking... you can't do it if you think you're only going to get out maybe we were, I mean the first ever gig we were asked to put on ourselves was at the Garibaldi and we didn't even headline wow yeah we we that, so we've never been we're not full of ourselves like that we're like that we wouldn't bring enough crowd yeah yeah, yeah. Tell that we did yeah, which is nice did. and slowly we're getting there but yeah we didn't headline it mm. and then um, yeah so. yeah I was going to say to you about venues because I think Northampton's a funny place for it there's not loads of like there isn't, actual is music bars venues like it doesn't carry very well but I don't know why that is or whether there's, I think it's just cause it's whether there's a market for it or not like whether well, it's missing it or whether it's, it's just not there promoters as well if they're working in a Northampton scene the idea I suppose is to get new people in your venue yeah mm. so if that's the case you're going to book bands out of town that have got yeah. a following yeah. so then if they've done that they've only got room for two acts to support yeah or maybe they um the act you bought I bought support acts as well because mm. you've got one man to choose from mm. who are you going to choose to represent Northampton it's a bigger band yeah mm. and, well, and also so, like they can't have that middle middle like set gigs I guess like we've got in also I went to Union Leeds there is a few venues up there that are that middle range of between, that yeah, yeah. Yeah. strange because Road Band Main is a fairly big old yeah. stage it's a big old fucking, Northampton has yeah. yeah like it's a, it's a fairly decent size like you couldn't oh, yeah. you know someone just starting up really if they've sold out a few pubs there's not really that next step whereas like mm. in Leeds you can play the the pack horse and you set it out with 100 people and it'd be rammed yeah, yeah, stupid yeah. Where and then the next step would be like the library which is like 125 and then like you can slowly build, build yeah, yourself yeah, yeah. to almost well, it's like get it's like saying in Nottingham there's like a direct like pilgrimage from like the bodega yeah, yeah. to like Rock City and then like there's like a route and like but I went to Manchester it's the same thing like you get you play pubs and then you can play like Deaf Institute and then people play Gorilla and then literally opposite that is the academy and then there's yeah. the arena and it's like bang there's you can tell how good a band is just from the venue they're playing. Yeah. If someone's playing Gorilla, I know what size band they are. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. normally like... Because that's, that's what the venue represents and I feel like Northampton's missing that 
string, as you say, it's like either you're playing in pubs or you're playing Romando and that's it. You There's know, like nothing it, there needs to be a little bit more of a. Yeah. But then, you know, is there a market? For, are enough people going to be going? I think you could. I think, I think it's hard. Like a it? Market, but it's like, do we have the buildings? Well, I'd love to be able to get involved in it and find a way of having yeah. a fucking building where you could like put it on. But, but the, then road the thing is, is, if you put a gig built. on somewhere like that, yeah, it's either down to you or the promoter. The main thing is, you need to get that room full. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. In order yeah. to get money back for what you've like, not so you don't lose out anything. Mm. I'm not saying it's all about money, but if you're a promoter, it's, it's got to be. Though, it yeah, all yeah, comes some point business, business, so, business, business. Yeah, happens, you yeah. have to have that head on it, and it's. Do you well in that case? Then am I going to bring an 18 year old up and coming band? Mm. Then why not bring anyone? What, what in business wise? What good is that for yeah. the actual thing? And yeah, I, I think that's what I mean for me in terms of Northampton. Like, what I mean in terms of like, are people going to go? It's like if you do it in Manchester, people will walk past because there's so many. There's so many people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone will walk past and go, yeah, let's just it's tickets are very quick. Let's just go in. Yeah, I don't I don't know who any of these people are. I'm just going to go and watch it's them. Like, well, you can one. be completely fucking unheard. You will just want people will wander in and yeah. watch you. Yeah. It's in Northampton. If you are completely unheard, there will be no one there. See, that so happened like, at our EP launch. We had a lot of people. That were just in the Black Prince drinking. Oh, and really? just come through and then just like, oh, what's five or a ticket? Like, there you go. Yeah, sound and nice they literally it. stayed the whole time right. and talked yeah. to us after. It's, it's such a good way. Yeah. Mm. But the other thing, I mean, it's good going to gigs. Yeah, like that. It's obviously, it's the main one. And if you can buy t shirts, you're helping that. Because streams aren't doing anything. I know you've nah. had the Spotify debate. And then, but there's, there's no money in streams. There's no, no there's there's nothing in streams, mate. No. no one buys CDs really anymore no. because it's on Apple it's Music or Spotify. Well, it's, 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 it's a fucking dead industry. I mean, it? <laughs> yeah, it's because no, you're a fucking it. wanker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only way to support. And if you, it's t shirts really is merchandise. Yeah. If you can get that. T shirts and vinyl, that's all like that. The, almost the way to bulk, go, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, but bulk, yeah. in order to get them things, you have to put money in. And so it's scary. You've got to take that risk and you think about it and. Yeah, so I mean that that's where it is. Um, mm. But then at the same time, we've tried getting gigs in London and Birmingham, and promoters just don't get back to you. Mm. That's tough, and isn't it's it? just and the only so ones that do, and they're like, yeah, 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 pays fifty quid, and you, you can put a night on. It's like, why would we do that in London? Yeah, yeah. Why do you want what are we going to bring people from Northampton with us to London? It's, yeah, it's, it's not going to happen, is nah. it? It's almost worth like almost like you were saying about up north uh, mm. to us lot to the like when we were talking earlier, and like the north for some reason, I don't know what it is. I feel like it's just a completely different atmosphere. Like it's more, the north is more community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of just I'm... people in general, everyone knows everyone. Everyone's going to talk to everyone. Mm. There's yeah. a level of sort of pretentiousness within sort of the south side of England yeah for sure I'm not going to talk to I don't know you do you know what I mean yeah, 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 yeah. so I think that's probably it but what you were saying there is a few places in Northampton like Lamplight or Garibaldi yeah. where people will walk in they, do, they, they, they will wander past yeah but yeah there's, it's just it's not quite I need to go to Lamplight like, I haven't been I've yet to go because yeah. obviously Northampton like, I've, I've been living in Leeds for three years yeah, so yeah. the bands that are now big round here the only one that I used to go and see was Garden because yeah, yeah. you know mates of them and also yeah. like they did that one they did a show at the um underground the road mend a bit yeah, yeah, yeah. mate that fuck it that's brilliant I love that little place down is that there the, the mini room at the back yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah mate yeah, I times. love that place they yeah. Hussey supported them and just it's but see there grimy. I don't think that's any bigger than the Black Prince though really well, yeah. if, like in terms of what you've been yeah, yeah, yeah. so automatically it's a jump from that to double the size and there just needs to be it. something in between I, I don't they can't be where's where's the building to do it that's yeah, yeah where do you, where'd you go where'd you go to do it and that's that's and that's what to be fair the scene needs around here and the next jump is moving to a city and like what are you saying Priors, you don't want to fucking hear a sniff do they uh, but again if you t- if you take sort of your local hats off mm. if you was a promoter would you I don't know how that's many the thing. You said have, the standable, isn't it? You know? Would you would you have us there? Personally, got... personally, I'm because I, I can be very business minded yeah. with a lot of it. Like I do think about the financial standpoint, and I and I do think like I'd always go off of the sound of the music and the core following they have. Mm. So like with yourselves, you'd probably would bring some Northampton heads down because you are such a you have quite a core group. But I wouldn't headline you. Any like, I, no, like I, let's you. say you don't know us. How do you know we have that core group? If we've not got the followers, well, but if you like social, if you social medias and stuff like that, if you just kind of like pin through on the activity that you're getting from followers on like stuff yeah, like that, I'd you say, almost especially the younger younger than yourselves as well. Mm. Social media is like 
what a 16 year old to put a photo of a smile when they get like hundreds of likes yeah true, do you know what I mean so how, how do you how do you police like it that? and, and the know, different that's... generations will give you more engagement mm. yeah. so people my age won't necessarily like there's times where we've packed up gigs and we're like oh yeah afterwards like, if you can follow us on socials that'd be great never do really uh, yeah so it's just that it's in, it's interesting because also like the older older heads like the ones the ones that are the promoters yeah. cause there isn't many that are like our sort of age really they're all old heads and they have an even even completely different look at it because yeah. they have to look at physicals really is their go-to mm-hmm. i think if you i think a fair way to gauge it nowadays is just like you've got to look at streams you've got to be able to look at social media you've got to look at the package altogether. Yeah. like you boys put out a fairly decent outfit but you, you wouldn't want to like trust you with some of the big like the some of like that bigger venues yeah. in Camden because it is that yeah. type of thing and it's like it's, it's just like, data driven a lot yeah. though, isn't it and I think like and like, I always I compare a lot of things to football because I like, I just know a lot about it because like, football it's manager like, yeah but like yeah, it's the same it. in that it's <laughs> a, um, like a lot of like scouts it used to be you'd go and watch a footballer play and if you liked them you'd sign them now it's like what's their shooting accuracy you know yeah. what, what, how far do they run I feel like it's going the same with the bands person, it's, not mm. footballer. exactly it's yeah, more actually, like it's... bands in a similar but, way it's like it's not about going to see a band and be like do you like them it's like how many followers have they got how many Spotify streams have they yeah, got and it's yeah. like actually they've you lost the art them, of like you know very true very true yeah. and this is just the stand it's the activity it's the base yeah. it's the engagement yeah. base that they have and it's almost like you've almost got to shoot your shots as well like I know London's a weird one to get into because it is so big but mm. I think if doing somewhere like Birmingham or Leeds yeah. or Manchester it's fairly easy That's to gauge the other thing that I've sort of shoot yourself in the foot is who do we who do we gig with yeah. yeah, that's the thing, and who do you... you put us with indie bands? You put us. It's, it's not the same. Mm. Yeah, and and like even even though like because a lot of promoters might think saxophone chick with a bit of scar, yeah, yeah. like Carl Phillips and the Rejects, well, like chick something yeah. that way. It's you put us with a jazz near. outfit. It's, you know, Still, we're not that jazz. Do you yeah, know what I mean? yeah. it's a whole like, different crowd because we like... pick and choose from different genres. Mm. If you put us with an indie band, they're going to be much more indie. Than yeah, yeah. Jazz, they're going to be much more jazz. And... Get that I'd loud. love to see you. At, um, there's a. It wouldn't be anything near a hundred. It's like probably a twenty max venue. Mm. A weird jazz bar that I go to in Leeds, and I think you'd su- you'd suit the outfit yeah. in there. It's a brilliant little place, and they always have like um, normally have like just individuals, and okay. they have music on every night from 11 o'clock at night until 4 o'clock in the morning every yeah. night they have live music it's brilliant and it's at the back of an old um, it's at the back of an old like um, hairdressers oh, really? so in the day it's hairdressers and at night That's it sick. turns into this jazz bar that you go through a door at the back <laughs> yeah. and you go down the spiral staircase yeah, it's yeah, brilliant yeah. but I'd love to see that there because it's that that eclectic mix like you were saying of that like blues, soul, jazz, yeah. indie much for, for me for a dream at like gig it'd be um you know, like the old jazz gigs when people just sat at tables. Yeah, you see, that's, that's what, what those places like. They're all dressed yeah, up, yeah, yeah. mate. That's what I want. Dressed up suits and like people just bringing whiskey to the table see, and yeah. everyone's just sat chilling. And, oh, yes, I like that. That'd that'd be be like that. Which think... that's what I'm thinking. The way the gigging is going now, people got to sit. Yeah, down mate, that's how it is. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, you <laughs> might come into your own. You know what I mean? Just sat down. But like, we are we're getting offered a lot of acoustic gigs at the minute. I won't do it. Really? Nah. What do you think about, like, quickly, because I know we go for a while and we need to go on to our new bands and stuff, but what do you think about, like, the lockdown stuff? Because, like, we've spoken about it and, like, things like virtual gigs, social distance gigs, like, are you lot looking into it or are you like, no, nah, we're not doing it till it's a proper gig or? Hmm. I won't. There's a reason I'm not done, like, an Instagram live or something. Yeah, like yeah. It's because I just don't like playing acoustic. Yeah. Especially our stuff, because if it's me just sat there playing acoustic already I've got to cut out a minute guitar solo mm. or it's not got the sax in there yeah. and I like when I'm in, do, playing with a full band I can belt it and I'll just mm. let my voice go yeah there's something when I'm playing acoustic it's not quite the same <laughs> do you know what I mean I'm restricted not, almost yeah. by it because it's such a stripped back just, sound it's a lot, when I'm playing acoustic it's a lot like a quieter voice and not general but mm. yeah. when I'm with a band I can just let it loose and that's the I'll same with recording um, when I do my vocals it takes me a while because I'm just there and I'm like singing but I'm not shouting as I do live yeah. and that's what I sort of need to do And but Sober Minds it was like the first time I managed to get it like and that's why I no, think it, it sounds a bit grungier because I just does, yeah. went for it yeah yeah. yeah. But, um, you've got to capture that live sound a little bit and it's mm, it's hard to do if there's say that all comes from the audience like you were saying and if, if it's not there it's not there yeah, is it? it's, 
Mm. Yeah, what do you think of bands that are doing it though? Like the whole um, we were talking about the Snuts in yeah. a couple ago. Like, what do you what do you think about that? Because like we've got as a fan as a fan like perspective of it. But what what is it in, is in in the industry? What's it feel like to some of you smaller bands? Is it do you respect it? Do you understand the hustle? Or do you think like well, I balance. I listen to your opinions. I, I did agree with most of it, but I don't see a problem with it. No, yeah. I'm the same. I have settled on that. The reason I say is they only want their fans doing it. Mm. And if you're a fan, you're going to pay that. Because mm, yeah. you would pay that to see him live. Yeah. Mm. I don't... It depends. I don't know the ins and outs. So I don't know if there is a production team there. Yeah, I think I there is. Yeah, from the, from don't the don't looks know. of the shots they've been put on their Instagram, to be fair, it looks fucking sick. But, <laughs> it does but then you sick. calculate, <sighs> realistically, how many are they going to sell off, based mm. off their following? Yeah. And then... A production team it doesn't cost that much yeah no. production teams aren't it's, about rate. for what they're doing as well it's yeah. not like it's you know it, that was my thing about it that they're not going to give they're going to give an experience yeah. which is going to be good but yeah. is the experience going to be good enough to warrant the, mm. the payment of like it's only so and good as you that say that's up to get. it's up to people paying isn't it yeah, yeah. yeah you're not wrong if you don't like them. it you don't do it you yeah. do you're it. not it's wrong fair crack you know and I don't I don't mind that but I do find it interesting that like you're a bit like it's just not you wouldn't be delivering yourself, so why would you do it? Do I, you I, like... Yeah, I, I wouldn't do it. Whether it's acoustic or... I've seen a few bands do it, and it sounds a bit a bit yeah. naff because you're all going through the same sort of mixer and it's going into your headphones, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. And stuff, and it just sort of takes away. And as much as you want to get into it, oh, I can't do it unless, they, unless, I, see, unless mm. I feed off it, I suppose. But it's just not, I'd rather just work behind the scenes, some new stuff out. Yeah. When we can get in the studio and record it. That's where I'm at the best, not live or anything yeah. like that. I'm in the studio. That's fine. Mm. Right, okay, that. I think we should move on to up and coming bands. And we have pre warned you. Mm. So I'm wondering, do you have a band that you want to give a little feature to or a little shout out to? I couldn't choose one, you know. Oh, okay, yeah. So I mentioned earlier Jordan McCamper. Yeah, yeah, big shout um, out. On that. He's a great artist. He played at my wedding, actually. He's a very good oh, close really? friend. Oh, that's it. He did the backing vocals for Fallen and Shoe Town oh, Blues. Yeah, Interesting. Cool. He was supposed to come to the studio with us in order to record those vocals, but I think he had some other commitments, so he couldn't. So he recorded it into his headphone mic Ooh. and sent it through WhatsApp. No and way. what you hear is... Is that? Yeah. Oh, mate, wow. that's Basically, sick. He managed to upload it into a sampler, record that, and then, and then a bit of EQ in. in. <laughs> That's exactly it. Just for but that shows some brilliant. talent. To to Mate, he's incredible. Just straight into. I can, if I ring him now and be like, "Look, I've got these four chords, think so," and he's got a killer like melody already. And yeah, yeah, yeah. he's talent. incredible. Yeah. He's incredible. Uh, so definitely, check, I, I'm not going to class him as up and coming though because because he's, he's up and come. Yeah, yeah, yeah come but, after um, Band wise, I check out Jimmy and the Moonlights. Jimmy and the Moonlights. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. It's, it's a, so it is one guy. Yeah. Um, he was in a, have you had a band called Parliaments. I haven't at all oh, okay he was in that um, this guy called Jordan Noon and um, yeah he's, he's a good friend and he's making Sick. some it's quite psychedelic it's quite sort of out there it's no, different yeah we like a bit yeah. of that it's different yeah we like a bit of that which I quite like um, a close friend I'm working with at the minute is um, a bit different but he's a producer so like beat maker and stuff like oh, that oh sick so anyone that's into that sort of stuff he's incredible his name's Howells mm. and um, yeah, yeah definitely give him a shout out that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, is yeah, good, yeah. Oh, that's a few little shout outs there for you. A few different things. That's yeah. cool. I like that. Yeah. What about? Do you have anything locally you want to shout out? Is it not really your sort of thing? That's or? Jimmy the Moonlight's local. He's local. Is he? He is. Yeah. He's a Northampton lad. Uh, tragic, like I said, a, a great. Uh, yeah, check them out. They are good. Yeah, obviously all the big ones, but yeah. Oh, that's that's really? it. I think that's good. Beautiful. Do you want to go? Or do you want me to go? Go. On, oh, you go. You go. Treat treat us to yours, Joe. Oh, go on, boy. Pa- I'll get a bit of paper then. Right, I've got baby right. Lung. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah baby if you haven't heard of it, I actually do have baby lung, and it's I've written hot. down. Yeah. <laughs> baby lung. <laughs> yeah. never heard of Is that your picture of your face? You <laughs> sketch it. <laughs> 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 um, no, I've got one. I've got for anyone. They followed us the other day, and I just I always like picking ones that follow us. Mm. Because it's to start with, we obviously did a lot of following, and we've messaged a lot of people, and now we're starting to get quite a few that follow us. And I've said said this before, like, if you follow us, I will listen to your music, regardless of if you message or whatever. And this Mantis State followed us. And I was instantly like, cool name, Mantis State. I don't know, I liked it. And I was like, let's have a look at them. Um, and I looked, and they've got like 100 monthly listeners, like relatively small, formed in Leeds, which is always a good start, like 
just always feels nice to me that does. it is yeah always Leeds Manchester nice. I'm like yeah, a terrible football team but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Chris is Gary screwing Man. in the corner <laughs> Gary Steve Gary. coming out his ears <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're like a funk rock band and they're actually like really funky they're like when they put a lot of people say funk rock and it's just like an indie song of a little bit chili of peppers or something funky. yeah a little yeah. bit of funky this is like this is, they said they're a band that want to get people like up and up and dancing it does feel like that it's really <laughs> like <laughs> it's, it's very different it is very different Man, but I won't like, put you on a line up with them I nah, don't know whether that would clash through <laughs> but like I quite like that they're trying to get people up and dancing and they said they're inspired by like Prince and Stevie Wonder and it is like very like old school I've never it, listened to Prince man Really? This is what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I only <laughs> ever listen to current stuff, so I'm now working my way back yeah, from fuck. going up. Get You're Prince, probably not out yeah. Prince. Fuck yeah. me, Prince is yeah. the Prince is the bollocks, mate. Yeah, but they've got um, their like most recent single is really good. Yeah, it's called Lost Without a Trace, and I listened to it and I was like, again, it's just something so different. A bit like you boys, like it's not like this is not an indie tune. Mm. First chorus, first chorus. This is like you listen to the first ten seconds and you like and you're like, whoa, what the fuck is going on here? But that's I really like that and it is very different very old school it's very very funk and I think potentially if they can get a bit of a following and you they did pack out a venue there would be a lot of people up and mm. dancing to it and that mm. could be that could be a sick night yeah. to go see them you know, to be fair I was, like, only, I was only joking about like you lot not supporting them because actually I do think as a warm up because of their sound and it being so almost like that funk soul yeah, 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 it yeah. does actually match your blue soul as almost like a progression so like it would be re- mm. you'd be a really good support for them in a sense because they you'd warm the crowd up nicely they'd get bopping yeah, and then yeah, these yeah. would come out and they'd throw their they'd throw their own With, like style to it I've always if I'm putting a gig on and it's it's not worth like when we put tragic on obviously mm. it was too much of a clash but I've always said I'd want like start as an acoustic artist and then have a rapper and then have yeah. like, just complete different mix and match yeah yeah genres. eclectic mix match just, yeah otherwise you're there seeing the same three bands mm. do you know what I mean just doing the thing so it's interesting but sorry interesting. no yeah that's it really I, you know they're, they're really really good they only had like 100 monthly listeners and yeah big up them for following us but I just checked them out and they are something really different and if you're into that little bit more like old school funk like little bit 60s dance vibes like yeah. you want to get up and you like something quite a beat then they want to check out Mantis State they're yeah good. they're brilliant they are brilliant they're, and they do they do feel very 80s as well yeah. they are very they're very they've got a nice filter and they don't feel as like um, as polished as maybe some of the other synths yeah. stuff we've been speaking about the last few weeks but that, they are really decent mine's very different it very is. different on, so then. I've I've gone for Black Tiles <laughs> Black Tiles Black Tiles yeah. and they're a female lead mm-hmm. and they are very they're very grungy they are fucking brilliant yeah they're, they're class they they're are really very good we've added them to the podcast uh, the um, podcast podcast well, I, have, late, I have now um, no we've added <laughs> me the whole time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <just> um, <laughs> <laughs> no but like they are they are brilliant and I've really really been impressed with some of the work they've come out we've only got three singles at the minute mm-hmm. um, and one of them is called Leave and that is Fuck me, oh, what a tune. Yeah. Proper anthem. And, there, you know, some of the lyrics in that is, um, uh, I bite the finger that feeds... Uh, the bite, I bite the finger that feeds me if it tastes like yours. Oh, and no. for some reason, that lyric is a just a lovely... Sits you, it? Yeah, it sits yeah. with you real nicely. Yeah. I do... I'm a real big fan of that band. And yeah. I think they'd be... You know, they're not as maybe punky as that Panic Shack that I've brought up in the past, but a bit more... Um, almost a bit more grungy bit more 90s rock sort mm. of vibe and it's got that nice um, nice twang to it that I really yeah. do enjoy listening to yeah it's- I like the um, their first one not not that one and not Dead Girls but the other one I can never I can't uh, Molly Molly Margarita I want to say it's called something like that. I don't know no I've literally <laughs> down. phone's dead Cool. Yeah, that one. I, lo- I love that song. That's a really good song. Yeah, I, I want to say it's Molly Margarita. Yeah. I've really made up a really good name if it's That's not Molly name. Margarita. Yeah, yeah. Band names are hard. Mate, to come up with. Yeah. Let's actually tell a story about yours because I didn't. I was always thinking his baby long's a funny name. Mate, well, when we say we're called baby long, people think we're like some metal act. It does. Do you know what? <laughs> though? That's, the looks that you get. Like, what? Think. Well, it's because it's like heavy long, which you're uh, almost like this real heavy punk, yeah, heavy yeah, like idol <laughs> style. <laughs> like, yeah. No, it, it's just a nickname. Yeah. Really? Uh, obviously, I'd be an asthmatic, and there's a group of us that sort of smoke together. And if you cough, which do <laughs> your baby lung, baby lung. <laughs> it was just that it was just a kind of stuck. Yeah. Like when when, it, when baby lung first started, and it's sort of early infancy, it was just me. It was yeah, just yeah, they were just the guys were helping me with the music, but it was Sick. just a solo thing. And gradually, it just connected so well with yeah. each other. It was like oh, it's a band. Do you know what I mean? I just took mm. a step. And I was like, cool. 
Um, but yeah, it's just baby love, mate. Calm. I like that though. I like that. It's just yeah, a nickname. And like, I'm definitely going to use that. <laughs> I thought yeah, God, yeah. Well, baby love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. baby love. <laughs> no, I, like, I do like that. No, that is brilliant. That is brilliant. Well, it's been fucking enjoyable having you on, mate. Yeah, mate. It's that's been a pleasure, it's, Again, it's a long it's one. Gone it, very quick, though. Mate, doesn't yeah. it? I say this to everyone. I'll, I'll, come, I'll come back if you have, mate. We'll yeah, chat about absolutely. What's it, what's it been, Chris? Ah, uh, ten. 15. Hour 15. 15. Another long one, but yeah, it does. It goes yeah, quick. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, we've been speaking loads about YouTube scenes and things like that. I'd love to delve yeah, further into that another time. So we'll for sure have you back on. And Absolutely. We appreciate it so much. Like, we speak a lot about, you know, supporting local bands and you supporting us as a local oh, podcast is a whole different thing. And we appreciate it so much because it helps us. And This is literally what you're saying about Northamptons. Everyone needs to help each other more. Yeah, for sure. Just piss off with your egos. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're not bigger than anyone else in Northampton. Yeah. Yeah, there's and a, that's what we're about. If everyone's we want to in a help them out. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, sure. Simple. Absolutely. Buy vinyl. <laughs> Buy vinyl, please. <laughs> speaking <laughs> of Stop which, yeah. speaking, speaking of, of the old vinyls, slap the vinyl up. Yeah, I've not seen it yet. No, no. You've not <laughs> seen it. <laughs> <laughs> the artwork on this is unreal. Speaking of vinyls, yeah. you, who has made it through an hour and 15 of a fucking podcast. Cheers, mum. I'm mine. You could My mum is definitely not watching this one. No. <laughs> She's, She's on her phone. She's on her phone. She can hear it. I want to show you this so shout out to Yoku World I think they're called it's um, a friend of mine that had a clothing brand it was originally going to be t-shirts and we never used it and there we go mate it's brilliant sick design really sick it's got falling and casualty on it this is a baby long 7 inch vinyl and it can be yours by entering giveaway go on our Instagram and our Twitter to enter not 100% sure on the details yet it'll probably be like and follow They'll all be on the posts, yeah. Instagram and Twitter. You can win a seven inch baby lung vinyl. For sure. So thank you for that. For yeah, supplying yeah, thank that you for supplying that. that. Yeah, you spot the misspelling on it as well. Fuck off. <laughs> there you go, we have a phone for you. So not, it turns out there is one. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out there is a one. I'm going to sit up all night like, there's only two words. Baby lung vinyl. Baby lung vinyl. <laughs> oh, no, no, absolutely. That's though, and you can win, so get on the socials. Yeah. If you're not following us at the SR podcast, and you can win a baby long vinyl so and that will be out that. that will be out now as soon as it releases six o'clock on Tuesday it'll be up um, yeah, whatever the date is and then it'll be up for a week eighth. or so and mm. we'll you are it's the 8th oh, 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 oh I'm well. so unorganised oh. uh, I've got next Monday booked off work we've <laughs> 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 been counting down yeah. <laughs> so the, the 8th it will be on it'll be online and if you get on it it'll probably be like and follow that'll be the details and there'll mm. be it'll be explained underneath um, so if you get on that follow through let us know what you're thinking into this podcast. It's been yeah. lovely having this lad on. It's been a fucking pleasure to have yeah. you through and we'll definitely be having you on again at some point. Yeah, check Baby Lung out, check Max Riley out, check us <laughs> yeah, out. Not the others, just check me out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. None of the other ones, this one's important. One. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me on, man. Yeah. I can't, we can't have the other lads on because they'll just rip me the whole time. <laughs> so, <laughs> too fair. When we've got the space and the mics, they'll all be here, don't we? For sure, we'll, yeah. get, we'll get it going. We'll measure you against Harry. See you soon. Yeah, see you speaker. We'll have a, we'll have a <laughs> cock off. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Have a full, have a full ninety thousands debate as well. Yeah, we need to bring that back. Just wrong. It's just wrong. It's just wrong. But yeah, it's been a pleasure. We'll see you on the other side. We'll see you next week. We might have some more coming, more extra guests, bigger things coming through. Obviously, as we've said before, episode twenty, mega stuff coming. Keep your eyes peeled. Let us know what you're thinking. Like, comment, subscribe. Goodbye. See you on the other side. Peace. Fox. <laughs> <laughs>